Claudia Bocchio towards the end of the strip, cautiously waiting. Finally, the attack from Luganova. Bocchio that pulls out the counter attack, and there is no touch. So this means that if in the first round, let's say, they finish 1-1, uh, the next round uh, it will go till 5 or it will go to 10? It absolutely will go until 10. The attack again from Luganova, and the counter-attack from Volkel, attempting the parry 4, however, it was very right timing for her, and the score is now 1-0 for Germany. Working in their preparations. No mobility. Again, the attack from Luganova going on there. And the parry repose from Bokel. Parry 4 reposed straight forward to the target. And it's 2 for the German team. One minute remaining in the clock. Working a little bit longer distance. Play the vocal again towards the end of the strip, waiting for the attack from Luganova. Trying to do a series of paints and preparations. The attack from Luganova, power repose of vocal that doesn't land, the continuation, the remiss of the attack from Luganova. The score is now 1 2. The German team is still ahead in the score. Bokel, that weighs until the very last minute, holds the bout and holds the timing again at the attack from Luganova. The counter attack for Bokel that remains in core a core, just cause the house, there's no touch. Tatiana Luganova is pressing quite a lot, Bokel. Yeah, absolutely. She's, uh, she's definitely uh, putting a lot of pressure and she's uh, not scared of going, going to the attack. She's pressuring more and this is paying off because now it's the second touch for Luganova, putting the score 2-2 two -two for T's first round. More activity in T's first bout. Again the attack for Luganova, the counter-attack, and it's a double touch and T's finishes the first round. Now they start the second round. Working in a series of movements. Working a longer distance. Russian team trying to get ahead and score, but it's going to be difficult with the uh, German team having a, a great left defender, very skill, trying to go um, in parry 8, in counter attack. This left defense are very, very skilled and trying to work on the blade in a longer distance. I think we have not mentioned uh, her name. Uh, is Britta Winterman, uh, representing the German team in this second round. She's a very, very skilled fencer, trying to work on the blade on the outside, trying to engage the blade in four. Make it, getting in another distance in the preparation. And the counter-attack, uh, the attack counter-attack does, does not work, there's not touch, and they restart. What a difference from the first round. Now we, we've seen the German team pressing a lot, uh, completely the opposite than the first one. Absolutely. 
And here we go. The uh, attack from the Russian team, the counter attack from the German team pays off. Parry 4 is straight forward to the target and still the German team ahead in the score. The counter attack from the Russians. And the score is 4 4 now. End of the uh, second round, and then we go to the third round. We have uh, Anna Sivkova from, on the Russian team on the left, and we have uh, Inke Duplitzer on the right from Germany. Duplitzer trying to look for the blade from Sivkova. Double touch. Sipkova is uh, ranked uh, number 12 in the world. She had a great season. She finished first in Prague and uh, she had two third places in uh, Germany and Malaga. We see uh, another attack that is paying off. The score now 6 5 for the Russians. Going to the foot. Both fencers, the distance is very close, and once it's a close distance, it's very hard to tell in Epe who's gonna get a touch since both have the same chances. The judge is not giving her the touch, he argues that it's after the half, so Duplitzer has to reposition where they stopped. Very close distance, both fencers working on the blade, double touch. Duplitzer again, trying to go for the attack. Now the counter-attack is for Sivkova that with a parry 4, straight forward to the target, gets the touch. Duplitzer ranked number 2 in the world. She also had a very good season. She, made, she was in 12 World Cups and uh, she, was, uh, she finished first in Hungary, second in Sydney and third in the UK. Wow, amazing results for Duplitzer. Very strong German team and very nice touch from Sivkova, right going to faint up to the body and finishing up in the foot. Caught her by surprise and the score now is 9 for the Russians, 6 for the Germans. So being in the third round, it means that now we're going to 15 points? Absolutely. 15 points or the... Oh, before we, we, we'll stop before we get to the third uh, minute, right? Absolutely. Very strong. Work, work on the blade for both fencers trying to attack the blade first and going for the target, continue for the target, attack for Dublitzer and pace off because that's for touch for Dublitzer. Again going for the toe touch and that pays off for Sivkova. Very strong toe touch and we've seen the same thing going forward for the target, finishing out in the toe. The score is 10-7 and they are missing 33 seconds. And the attack, the push for the Germans, the pace off, going straight forward with pain disengage. And eight for the Germans. Very strong, they know they're running out of time. And the attack, the counter-attack that comes from Sivkova. Attempt to touch the toe, there's no touch, we go for the fourth round. And the score is 
Now we have in the screen Ermakova, Oksana on the left from Russia, and Claudia Bokel on the right. The start of the fourth round. It seems that the first two rounds were quite uh, slow, but this uh, round was uh, it, it was quite fast. Absolutely, both fans very aggressive. A lefty, which is from Russia, very strong as well, very patient. And Bokel on the right, trying to work on the blade and longer distance. Attempting the touch first to the wrist, probably a continuation of the attack forward to the target. It's, uh, it's very interesting how different is the game for every of these fencers. That's why the team competitions are very, very interesting because we can see a very wide variety of the styles for either of the teams. And being two, uh, these two very strong teams, they know, these fences know each other very well. They, they've seen, they fence against each other very constant in many of the competitions. Here we see the attack from Bokel and the counter-attack from Russia that lands right on the arm. The score is 12-8 for Russia. Ermakova, very patient. Emilio, are there any rules? Uh, how is the order? I mean, could you explain us a little bit more about how it works? You choose the order, Is uh, how is it? Well, uh, the, fe the fencers at the beginning of the bout, they are giving um, um, a sheet where they can uh, write down the order that they want to keep throughout the uh, competition, being number one, number two, and number three. Then this order will carry over throughout the, the different rounds, and uh, basically, basically what they're going to be looking for for running this order is who is the fencer that will close the final match, or the one that's going to save the bout or save the match. And usually they tend to put the very strong fencer at the end, and um, since they all have to fence against each other, Many times uh, they just look at the, uh, the final fencer, who is the, the, mo the most important fencer in, uh, at the beginning. And also the, uh, the very first fencer of the bout will play a very important role in, since he's the, one, uh, he's the one that's gonna give probably the first lead. A slower bout that finishes up 12-8. We see Ermakova passing the the round to Tiana Luganova. Luganova duplitzer now. In this round five of this gold medal bout. Twelve points for the Russians. They will try to maintain the lead. But in the team competition, it's very hard to predict uh, this round. Working a longer distance, both fencers. They are not risking. And finally, Russia risks. And the counterattack from Inca. So the score is 13 8. The attack again. And now they put the score 14 9. Two minutes remaining in this fifth round. Luganova trying to uh, be more conservative in a very long launch, pulling the launch out in a very long distance. That's a very long launch. Trying to look for the touch, the attack, the counter attack. The counter attack is good for Duplitzer and. I'm sorry, the counter-attack is good for uh, Luganova, and that gives you the touch, putting the score in 15 for the Russians. Working again in longer distance, being very patient, Luganova. Different to the first bout that we saw from her, where she was more 
um, aggressive and more towards attack. Now she is changing her games because it's a different fencer and she knows that Duplitzer it goes very fast and very strong to the attack so now she's going to try to wait a little bit more however she's going to pull the right counter attack and probably at a time when um, Duplitzer is retrieving for her attack she's going to pull out the counter attack right in the spot double touch Attack, counter-attack, counter-attack is good for Duplitzer. Duplitzer is pressing quite hard. And, uh, as you said, Emilio, uh, the game of uh, Tatiana is completely different now. Yeah, and but she continues. She's very strong fencer and she really pushes um, for that counter-attack. In this case, it didn't work. It was the remise of the attack for Duplitzer that pays off and gives her this touch almost uh, at the end of this fifth round. The attack from Luganova, but is the judge does not give that attack. It's, uh, he argues probably that it was in a remise, calling the hot first. I don't think we're going to see another touch because the time is running out and finish the fifth round. Let's start the sixth round now. Now we have uh, Sivkova from Russia on the left and Heidemann uh, from Germany on the right. The score is 16-12. Very strong fencers, both of them. Very aggressive, both of them. Working a very short distance. Very fast movement off the uh, point and is a double attack, simultaneous attack from both of them, given uh, one touch each. The score is 17-13 for Russia. Again, a simultaneous action, double touch, and both being very aggressive, working on the blade in very short distance though. Windeman trying to push forward for the attack. Sivkova that uh, patiently waits, looking for the counter attack. The first uh, yellow card of this final match. She turned her back, and that's penalized by the judge with a yellow card. It's a warning. Again, an attack from Windeman and double touch. The score is 19-15 uh, for Russia. Windham, very, very pushy. Trying to go for the a strong toe touch, which pays off, but it was a simultaneous touch. And one touch for each. So the score is 20-16 uh, for Russia. Russia maintaining the lead, 